There comes a time in every generation's age when, when it gets to witness the shifting of the tectonic plates of public attitudes, when immense changes occur, however incrementally, that shape the destinies of people and of nations. And my friends, one of those moments is now. For the first time in history, and certainly for the first time in the marijuana reform movement, and I've seen a lot of it, we can declare with confidence that a majority of the voters support the repeal of marijuana prohibition. We suspected it for a long time, but now we've got hard proof. And the hard proof is the results of the 2008 election for decrim in Massachusetts when 65% of the voters supported decrim. 45,000 more than voted for Barack Obama. We've seen the same results with the per public policy questions that have been on the ballot in Massachusetts and 45 legislative districts since 2002. We've seen those same results in private polling results. The fact is that a majority of the voters are on our side. Now, think about that number for a minute, my friends, 65%. Compare that to the number of adults who are said to routinely smoke marijuana, which the surveys tell us is between 10 and 20%. So let's call that 15%. And let's assume, too, that all the stoners go to the polls. So if you subtract 15 from 65, you're left with 50% of the voters, a huge number of 50% of the voters who don't smoke pot but are on our side. Who are these people? Let me suggest who they are. They're the people who don't smoke pot, but they sure as hell don't think people ought to be arrested for it. They're the people who don't smoke pot but don't see why it can't be taxed and regulated and generate some new tax revenue without raising anybody's taxes and generate some new jobs and some new industries for this economy. They don't smoke pot, but they don't understand why the remarkable cannabis plant is left imprisoned in this ancestral prison of prohibition and science is not permitted to explore the contributions it can make to industry and to medicine. They don't smoke pot, but they see and understand how the marijuana laws are used as instruments of racism and for the oppression of minorities. And they are as alarmed by that as are we all. And they don't smoke pot, but they see and they understand that when people get busted for pot, they're not being punished for violating anybody's rights or for endangering the public health or the public safety. They're being punished merely for disobedience. In other words, my friends, those 50% of the voters who don't smoke pot, but they get it. I've got a name for those people. They're our new friends. I've got a name for them. I call them the pot tolerant. They don't smoke pot, but they're cool with people who do. Well, we welcome them to our side. We welcome them to our ranks for marijuana reformers. But you're probably saying, well, where are they if there's so many of them out there? Why aren't they here today? I mean, I'm looking out, I don't see exactly a cross-section of American voters. That's what makes it so great here. Well, let me tell you why they're not here today. They're not here today because they're afraid that if someone sees them here or someone takes their picture, 
their boss might hear about it. They could lose their job, or they could lose their next promotion, or they may not, they may lose their security clearance, or they've got kids in school, and the other parents might find out, and their kids got caught up in some sort of mess there. My friends, the utter perniciousness, the utter perniciousness of marijuana prohibition is that it creates fear in citizens and makes them fearful even to exercise their fundamental constitutional rights to peaceably assemble and petition the government for a redress of grievances as we proudly do here today. <clears throat> well, there's a silver lining here. All is not bleak, my friends. There is a time when those voters, when all of us, have the opportunity to overcome that fear and we get the chance to say what we really think about the marijuana laws. And that's when we go into the privacy of a voting booth and we pull the curtain closed and we tell the government what we really think. That happened in 2008 with decrim. It's happened with all the public policy questions. It's going to happen in Massachusetts this November with Medical Marijuana Initiative. And pay close attention to this. It's going to happen in Colorado and in Washington State and maybe Oregon in this November when there will be initiatives, not medical, but full legalization, medical and non-medical, on the ballot in November of those two states. Keep your eyes, keep your eyes. After, on November 6th, on election day in, in November, certainly go to the polls and certainly call all your friends and make sure they go to the polls and support the Medical Marijuana Initiative. And then turn on the TV and watch the live coverage of the returns from Colorado and Washington State. And you may see right there on live t TV, you may see those tectonic plates shifting before your eyes. The world will change in November. Get ready for it. So my friends, the big news in our struggle, the big news in our long, long struggle is that finally we can declare that a solid majority of the voters are on our side. And because most of them don't smoke pot, because most of them don't smoke pot, it can fairly and correctly be said that legalization is not just for stoners anymore. It's for taxpayers, it's for the economy, it's for parents, it's even for the police. But most of all, my friends, legalization will restore the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. Thanks very much. Have a great day today.